Hello students. Welcome to the first lecture of immunology in, in this session. Today I will be giving you a brief introduction about immunology and the mammalian immune system. Starting off with immunology. So immunology you all know that literal meaning of immunology is study of the immune system and you all know that we have an immune system which help uh, us against uh, various infectious agents like viruses, bacteria, fungi and parasites. This field of immunology is very very important branch of medical and biological sciences and that's why it is being taught in all the courses of life sciences as well as medical sciences as it is taught in biochemistry as you all are studying immunology as one of your paper in your course then it is also uh, taught in microbiology, biotechnology zoology, botany and also to the MBBS students and MD students. So the knowledge of the immune system is very very important because if the immune system is weak then if our immune system is weak then we'll have we'll get infections very easily and if the immune system doesn't work properly it may result in the uh, conditions of autoimmunity, allergy as well as cancer. This field of immunology is very important because this has given us vaccination technique, safe organ transplantation, identification of blood groups. Then these days uh, we have more corona antibodies for treatment as well as research. Then we have drugs for treatment of infectious diseases such as HIV, Ebola, etc. Then uh, the field has also given us critically important research techniques and tools such as flow cytometry and antibody technology. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, discuss a little about the origin and evolution of this field. So, the field has in its origin, in its base or roots, the concept of immunity. That from this concept of immunity, immunology, immunology has evolved. So what is immunity? Immun immunity is a state of protection against infectious diseases. That means if someone has immunity against certain disease, he will not have that disease, is immune to that disease. So first of all, this phenomenon of immunity was realized or observed and most probably it was realized by a great historian Thucydides in 430 BC. In a plague epidemic, epidemic in Athens, he observed that only those who had recovered from plague can nurse the sick because they will not contract the disease the second time. That means those people who had the disease and recovered from the disease had developed immunity against the disease. So that's why uh, uh, those people they were uh, best best fitted for nursing the sick so after realizing uh, this concept of immunity uh, people started working on on inducing immunity in healthy individuals so that they don't get sick at all so the early vaccination studies they have led way to the field of immunology so first of all and you all know uh, you all know because i have discussed the uh, variolation and vaccination techniques in your last semester and uh, first a uh, variolation technique came and that led to the development of vaccination technique that we have today so um, as per record the first attempt to induce immunity against infectious diseases is recorded in 11th century or 15th century according to QB uh, the first record, uh, uh, first recorded version is in 15th century, and uh, recording to another book, Tazard, uh, first recorded atten uh, attempt to induce immunity uh, was in 11th century by Chinese. So it was China. It were Chinese in 11th century who introduced uh, variolation technique by inducing uh, immunity against smallpox. Hanita. 
so uh, edward jenner in 1978 he invented vaccination against smallpox so he invented uh, vaccination against smallpox and then louis pasteur also wrote lots of work on uh, development of vaccines against various other infectious diseases and he got uh, success mainly in developing uh, vaccines against anthrax and uh, rabies and uh, these scientists during this time these scientists Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur they did develop vaccines against diseases but they did not know how these these vaccines induce immunity in individuals so mechanisms of uh, development of immunity was not known so the other scientists they started working on understanding the mechanism of development of immunity and uh, they did lot of work and with time uh, uh, breakthrough discoveries were done and uh, mechanisms were understood so this is a, a picture a table from uh, qb immunology uh, nobel prizes for immunological uh, immunologic research uh, so these all these scientists they did great break breakthrough work in the field of immunology and they got nobel prize for their work so from 1901 to 2011 so these many scientists they got the award and uh, so in nobel prizes nobel prizes distribution of nobel prizes started in 1901 uh, and ml von Waring, who worked on serum antitoxins got the uh, prize the very same year and we know that the uh, serum antitoxins and we know that uh, Antibody, antibodies are the serum antitoxins then Robert Koch all these are great known scientists Robert, Robert Koch work on cellular immunity to tuberculosis and Eli Metnikoff he uh, discovered uh, phagocytosis then Charles Rickett discovered anaphylaxis then Jules Bordet discovered complement mediated bacteriolysis then Carl Lensteiner discovered human blood groups then um, McFarlane Burnett and Peter Medawar they discovered uh, acquired immunological tolerance then uh, Porter and Edelman they discovered the chemical structure of antibodies so major histocompatibility complex was discovered by George Snell, Jean Dossett, Baruch Benasaraf so um, so much of good work the breakthrough work was done from 1901 to 2011 and uh, transplantation immunology uh, was uh, studied uh, by Thomas and Murray and then major histocompatibility complex antigen uh, was uh, discovered by Peter Duharty and uh, Rolf and uh, Zinkernagel Zinkernagel this is very interesting and uh, uh, you people must uh, go through this table and and uh, better memorize the names of the scientists and the work they have done anyways when you go through these very topics uh, you will read about uh, the scientist also so uh, this data is from to 1901 to 2011 and after 2011 uh, after 2011 uh, in 2018 James P. Ellison and Tasuko Honjo they got the Nobel Prize for their work on cancer immunotherapy and uh, from 1901 to 2011 uh, these many uh, uh, scientists have got a award, award for their work in the field of immunology. Now coming over to career opportunities, if you pursue your career in, immun in the field of immunology, what, what are the opportunities for you? So immunology is a fast growing and very exciting field. So the job opportunities that uh, you will have in this field is in research and academics. You can become a scientist in any government institute or uh, 
in any um, R&D unit of any um, uh, drug company or any biotechnology company. Or you can also uh, pursue your career in academics. You can do your PhD, then you can start uh, teaching in the university and college level. So these are, these are the opportunities that you have. So So I have made a path for uh, for you people. I have made a path for becoming an immunologist. If you want, if you at all you are interested and you want to become an immunologist, what path you have to follow right now at this point of time? So as you people are uh, doing MSc, first of all you have to clear your CSIR, GRF, ACMR or GATE exam. Uh, this is a very 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 important exam. You have to qualify it. That's why I have written it in red color and gold. After clearing this exam, uh, you can pursue your PhD in immunology from any uh, lab where this uh, uh, work in immunology is going on. Then you have to do postdoc in the same field and then after doing postdoc you can become a scientist or you can become a, you can pursue a career in academics. So some prominent research institutes for doing PhD in Immunology, I have uh, written here, you can uh, do your PhD from National Institute of Immunology, then National Institute of Virology, Pune, uh, this NCCS Pune, then BHU Varanasi, PGI Chandigarh, then SGPGI Lucknow, CDRI Lucknow, also GNU, New Delhi. So these are very prominent research institutes. Uh, there could be an other institutes also from where you can do your PhD. But it is very important that you do your PhD from an institute, from a very, very good, well-established lab. Because uh, work, uh, you can do a PhD from university also, from any university. But uh, mostly univers universities do not have that kind of facility. They don't have that much of money and they don't have that state-of-the-art lab, lab laboratory facility for doing PhD. So it is always better to, you do PhD from a good institute, from a very, very good research group. So, if, uh, so that is it. So the uh, major areas of research in immunology if you work uh, any of these areas of immunology, then you will become an immunologist. So you can work in infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, allergy, asthma, tumor immunology, mechanisms. You can work in understanding uh, mechanisms of immune system, then antibody therapy, vaccine development, transplantation immunology. If you study, if you do research in any of these areas, then you will become an immunologist. So that was about immunology. Now